What up YouTube? It's Quetzalcoatl hitting you up with another video. Today we're going to talk about the Andy Lee versus Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight that happened this Saturday night. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. ended up winning by knockout in the seventh round. We're going to break down the fight round by round as well as talk about Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. future in boxing. The first round, there was very little activity. Although I did see Andy Lee establishing his jab as well as catching Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. with a good left uppercut as Chavez Jr. was trying to come in. Because of that and the low activity, I scored the first round in favor of Andy Lee, 10-9. Going into the second round, Chavez Jr. landed a pretty good left hook in the first couple of seconds that caught Andy Lee's attention. Andy Lee recovered fairly quickly and began establishing his jab again. And he caught uh, Chavez Jr. with two very good uh, straight left hands that stopped Chavez Jr.'s progression. I had that round scored for Andy Lee, 10-9 as well. Uh, going into the third round, Andy Lee's activity started dropping a little bit. And uh, Chavez Jr. landed a, a couple of good body punches. At that point, you saw from the beginning, actually, that HBO was showing a bias towards Chavez Jr. And having that in mind, I scored that round for Chavez Jr. Because I knew that Harold Letterman and the HBO commentators were going to give that round to him. In the fourth round... Uh, Andy Lee dominated most of that round, although Chavez Jr. did come on strong late in the round. And even though he caught Andy Lee with some good punches, Andy Lee in those exchanges also landed well, and I felt that that evened that round out. And I had the fourth round scored 10-10. Uh, going into the fifth round, um, Andy Lee started catching Chavez Jr. with some clean punches in the beginning of the round. Uh, Chavez Jr. started dancing or some shit, and uh, that was pretty much, you know, he was trying to politic for the, for that round, and uh, but Andy Lee was catching him with some clean punches nonetheless, but uh, Andy Lee did okay, but, you know, he let Chavez, you know, start landing some pretty clean punches late in that round, and uh, I ended up giving that round to Chavez, 9-10, going into the sixth round, uh, Andy Lee, you know, threw a very good uh, straight left hand and began controlling that round. Chavez had small spurts in that round, and HBO really like started writing his dick. But I felt that Andy Lee did enough to win that round. Going into the seventh round, Andy Lee was up three rounds to two with one round even in my eyes. Um, although Andy Lee was controlling the fight, uh, when Andy Lee would get caught, you could see the that he was uncomfortable. You could see the worriness in his body language. Uh, he began getting caught in the corner by Chavez Jr. And midway through that round, he got caught with a clean shot. Chavez Jr. began throwing flurries, and the referee ended up stopping the fight. Uh, I believe it was a bit of a premature stoppage, but Andy Lee was in big trouble, and that probably would have been the end result no matter what. Um... It was an exciting fight. It was a, a good fight for Chavez. But what happened after <laughs> was, again, HBO showing their bullshit. After the fight, uh, HBO began talking about the fall fight that's coming up, which is supposed to be Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. versus Sergio Martinez in the fall. And they began saying that perhaps Sergio Martinez is going to have problems with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.'s size because he fights at middleweight but tends to come in at over 170 for most of his fights. <sighs> my, my, my. Like I said, Chavez Jr. looked good in this fight, but when you look at it for what it is, look at who he's fighting. Andy Lee is pretty much a fucking nobody. And that's who Chavez Jr. has been fighting this whole time. He's been fighting nothing but fucking tomato cans and fucking cab drivers. Just like his dad did for most of his career. Which is why I didn't have his dad rated as the number one Mexican fighter of all time in my last video. And you can go back and see that. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is very heavily promoted. And I think that his public relations and shit like that is, is very good. Because, I mean, he's, he's very overhyped. Um, in that fall fight, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is going to get fucking destroyed. I guarantee you that. All these HBO commentators, 
They seem to favor uh, Chavez Jr. going into that fight, but they're going to be fucking wrong. All that is fucking bullshit. Just like what you saw in the last week in the in the Bradley versus Pacquiao fight. That's HBO for you. Just like you saw in the Marquez versus Pacquiao 3 fight. That's a bullshit. Go, going into fall, Martinez is going to destroy Chavez Jr. You want to know about Chavez Jr. future? In two years, this nigga finna be selling tacos somewhere. This motherfucker ain't going to be fighting. I'm telling you that right now. He fights. If he fights Martinez in the fall, it's over for this motherfucker. Um, <laughs> but, you know, HBO, they, they push their agenda. I mean, just like you saw in, in Jim Lampley's show that came on uh, immediately after the fight, in which he supposedly uh, began to interview uh, Dwayne Ford, which was which was one of the judges who scored the fight in the Bradley versus Pacquiao fight. Uh, again, um, Dwayne Ford said nothing but bullshit. You know, he talked about uh, comp your box and... You know, Dwayne Ford started talking about how most people don't know how to judge fights and stuff like that. Jim Lampley never really pressed Dwayne Ford for any kind of real questions that would show more insight into what really happened. And to me, that was just all scripted shit. You know, they both knew what they were going to ask each other going into the going into that interview, as well as their responses. You know, there were no surprises or anything like that. Uh, then, uh, I believe Bradley's manager... Cameron Duncan came in, and, uh, you know, he came in politicking as well, you know, talking about <laughs> effective punches and all this bullshit, which if you saw that fight, you know, is com a complete fucking lie. Uh, the last person to be interviewed on that show was uh, Todd DeBuff, which is the president of uh, Top Rank Promotions, and, uh, you know, he talked about the same shit, you know, he talked about, you know, that they're conducting an investigation, and they're trying to win the people's trust back, and... Uh, just like with how Julio Cesar Chavez fights are all public relations and they try to hype people up, that's what that was. That was just them trying to do damage control on this shit. And if you have a set of eyes, I mean, you can see what's really going on. Um, Max Kellerman also came on, and you know, Max Kellerman is a fucking hater, like I said in the last. I really li didn't listen to in this interview because I know that nigga is full of shit. The, the only thing that I saw that was relevant in that entire interview or in that entire show was Jim Lampley's uh, last words at the end in which he was telling people to educate themselves about boxing and that's something that people need to do as far as the casual fans in boxing you need to educate yourselves on what everything boxing is about and how to effectively score fights and not just be biased because you heard about this fighter here or, or whatever the fuck the case may be and I think that that was the most important thing in that show. But will people do it? No. They're going to continue to have casual boxing fans that are fooled by all this HBO bullshit. And until people truly boycott boxing and ask for boxing to be changed, nothing is going to happen. So, in summary, Chavez Jr. looked good. But in the end, in the fall, Martinez is going to knock that nigga the fuck out. Stay tuned for more videos. This is Quetzalcoatl signing out.